Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Passat B7. If you do not take into account the features of the automatic, then the transmission is more than reliable. Small difficulties are associated only with the anthers of the front CV joints. There are often cases when they followed float with runs up to 50,000 due to a weakened or flu of clamps. It is recommended to check this unit, and if a non-factory clamp is installed, then a thorough revision of the state of the CV joint itself is necessary. Four-wheel drive cars with hold decks clutch in the rear wheel drive are excellent. The clutch itself of the latest generation is still working reliably. It is recommended to change the oil in it at 40-50 thousand mileage, not earlier. The electrician doesn't fail. The pump, even in the absence of maintenance, will travel 120-180 thousand kilometers, with mileage about 200. The node usually requires repair. Again, there are no difficulties with an angular gearbox. True, this is all provided that the heavily tuned engine is not worth it. With a 350 horsepower engine under the hood and regular races on the tracks, all elements of the transmission are at risk. You can turn off the propeller shaft, the rear gearbox, and the clutch of for literally tens of thousands of kilometers. There are no particular difficulties with manual gearboxes, provided that the motor power was not increased. The clutch is rather weak even for the stock 1.8 TSI and 2.0 TSI engines, not to mention the diesels. The clutch resource is on average about 50-60 km, even with careful handling, and an expensive 2 mass flywheel doesn't serve much more, especially on diesel engines. And if the motor is forced, then real difficulties begin. The clutch at the torque about 320 nanometers wears out literally for 10-20 thousand, and then slippage begins. The VR6 clutch doesn't fit, but luckily tuning comes to the rescue. You can put on a custom price flywheel and get what you want. But the manual transmissions themselves, in practice, turn out to be less strong than the 6-bit pre-selector DQ250 and moreover than the DQ500. So that for serious tuning in this case, the mechanics is not the best way. With a torque of 450-470 nm, standard manual transmissions do not last long. While there are no purely resource problems yet, except that the seals of the manual transmission axle shafts can leak at high mileage. The most successful option that could be found on machines of the B6 generation, the ICNT F60SN, was not officially installed on the B7. If you see it in the advertisements for the sale, most likely the car is not exactly the B7, but its American cousin, which has a very distant relationship to the European B7. Occasionally, there are cars with automatic transmission swap. Since the manufacturer has provided everything for this, literally take and put, for example, with Passat, Double C or Skoda Octavia, where such a configuration was one of the most common. Not a bad box, but on the Passat, with the standard cooling system, it regularly overheats and doesn't last so long. Even after 100-120,000 km, twitching is possible due to contamination of the valve body, dirty oil and intense wear of the blocking linings of the gas turbine engine, and overheating also makes the automatic transmission very fragile. In general, this automatic transmission will overcome 200-300,000 km only with good service, but the chances are high and it is relatively inexpensive to repair. Normally, cars with engines up to 1.8 TSI inclusive relied on a 7-speed drive DSJ transmission with the general name DQ200. Volkswagen made an attempt to make an inexpensive, fast and economical automatic transmission for their cars. Here are just all users of cars with these boxes until 2013-2014 were beta testers. After 2014, a set of modifications to the box finally covered the main weaknesses, and the reliability of its operation increased to quite acceptable for automatic transmissions of the latest generations. Now the box began to drive stably until the normal wear of the clutch kit for 120-160 thousand city mileage without bothering with breakdowns. Unfortunately, there were more than enough difficulties on cars until 2013. The short life of the clutch kit is just the tip of the iceberg. The company constantly improved the software of the box to save the resource while maintaining the dynamics of the car, so the first versions of the automatic transmission were noticeably more cheerful than the current ones. Initially, the clutch resource often didn't exceed 30,000 km, and the technology for replacing them turned out to be very difficult. After the first repair, the problems multiplied. If the technology was violated, the mechanical part of the box suffered, and the set of clutches itself didn't last long. Now the services have become adept at carrying out this procedure, and often unofficial ones change clutches with a good chance of success. But there are other problems as well. 
The most obvious and fatal incident for the DQ200 was turned out to be a very weak differential, not designed for a moment of 250 nanometer from the engine, and a large gear ratio of the first steps of the automatic transmission. During intensive starts, the axis of the satellites was literally welded to one of them or simply left to the body. Of course, in any case, the box body collapsed, the wheels wedged, and only the fact that this usually happened at low speed saved from serious consequences. Breakdowns of the mechanical part are also not uncommon. Until 2013, this happened often, especially in cars operating in Moscow traffic jams were unlucky. Wear of gear shift forks, clutch release forks, rod steeds lead to shock engagement of gears or complete failure of the box. Shafts and bearings with this kind of malfunctions also broke, but sometimes the bearings of the shafts failed on their own. An important part of the DSJ is the mechatronics unit, which contains the control electronics and hydraulics. In the case of the DQ200, the unit doesn't have external cooling, which makes it dependent on the temperature in the engine compartment and the electric drive of the pump. Previously, well bodies were not repaired, only complete replacement was practiced, but at the moment this problem has been resolved. If you nevertheless decided to buy a car with DSJ7 and the box went into an accident, then even an independent repair is possible. All you need is a suitable diagnostic scanner to move the rods to the service position and a set of tools to fix the clutch. You can remove it almost in the yard, although all systems of new boxes are very demanding on cleanliness, so I cannot recommend this style of repair. Further, it is quite simple to replace the well body drive pump, hydraulic accumulator, system seals, filter on the state of which much depends, and clean or replace a set of solenoids. If the board is damaged, for example, part of the wiring has burned out, or contact between the electronics board and the main wiring board is lost, then very few people do such repairs, but it is also possible. Gearboxes from the turn of 2013 and 2014 have an order of magnitude fewer failures, especially in terms of mechatronics and mechanics, and optimized algorithms save the clutches. Those owners who bought the car in 2013 were especially lucky. Their cars have a 5-year warranty, as well as early, frankly unreliable box options. Since 2014, the warranty has been reduced to the previous two years, but this is fully justified. The 6-speed DQ250 automatic transmission, which was installed with 2.0 TSI, 3.6 FSI and 2.0 TDI diesel engines looks much more interesting. Its design is very different from the dry box. Its clutch is made in the form of package of wet clutches, which work in the common oil bath of the engine. The box is designed for noticeably more torque and will actually swap instead of the DQ200 during tuning. The main advantage of this box is the great age of the structure, which means the best balance in the reliability of all its components. But in essence, the problems are the same. The clutches do not burn, but they are where affects the contamination of the gearbox oil and the wear of the mechatronics. There is external cooling and the installation of a banal crankcase protection will no longer lead to the death of the box. But the cooling is clearly insufficient. The design of the thermostat and heat exchanger allows the oil temperature to go far beyond 120 degrees, and at such temperatures the wear of the mechanics greatly increases and the electronics begin to fail. Fortunately, most of the problems are solved by frequent changing the gearbox oil. This is just the case when the more often, the better. Once every 40,000 will be optimal. The most common problem with this automatic transmission is wear on the solenoid seats. Due to the strong contamination of the oil during operation, the brass literally gnaws out pieces of the aluminum plate. Garbage in shavings are a common problem with such boxes. It is recommended to change the filter frequently. It can be trivial to break if it is heavily sold. It is also worth installing an external radiator, for example from the American Passat WC it raises like a native one, and a filter. Chips suffer from seals, rubber rings and box seals, so leaks are and pressure leaks occur regularly with poor maintenance. The mechanical part also suffers from contamination of the oil, dirt harms and bearings and gears, and at a certain level of contamination with solid particles, the damage grows like an avalanche. Both DSG robots provide very high performance characteristics of the car, but the number of expensive repairs due to their fault is very high, even with low mileage. And if the DQ250 box basically requires frequent and high quality maintenance, then the DQ200 until 2013 simply has too many design defects. Not all of them appear at once. Many cars cost only their re replacement on the software of the blocks and one replacement of the clutch for runs up to 200,000 km. But the chances of serious expenses with such an automatic transmission are very high, especially during plug operation and even with an increased temperature in the engine compartment and maximum loads. 
Such a box is very bad when tuning motors, because with a standard limit of 250 nm, there is software for it and even clutch wheel is designed for a moment one and a half times greater. In this case, the mechanics simply burn. Engines of the Passat B7 are also the most advanced. It is supposed to have only one naturally inspired engine, this is a 2.6 liter BR6. The rest are equipped with turbines with all the attendant difficulties. Immediately I will agree that all the proposed motors are faulty in terms of the mechanical part. But the scope for tuning is simply amazing. If you read my article about Turing turbo engines, then it uses just a motor from the EA AAA series as an example as on the Passat 1.4 TSI engines are tuned noticeably worse, but the increase in power compared to the factory versions can be up to 50%, which is very, very much. But there were severe problems with reliability even with the normal operation. Even with such a small age by automotive standards, there were complaints about poor air tightness of intake systems, contamination of radiators and leaks of cooling systems. You should pay attention to this when buying any gasoline Passat. Oiling the intake pipes at the same time tells about whether the engine is using oil and where the leak occurs, through the turbine and or through the ventilation system. In general, the inspection of the engine compartment even on a fresh car should be carried out with great meticulousness. Quite a few engines for a mileage of 120-150 thousand kilometers have already gone through the replacement of the piston group or even the replacement of the block, so that nuances associated with an unqualified installation are possible. Damage to the wiring, violation of the lane of houses in wiring. In addition, the owners are clearly embarrassed to admit the true mileage of the cars. Sometimes you can get this information when diagnosing with a scanner according to the marks from various blocks, where the run riders were too lazy to climb but the state of the engine will tell a lot to the attentive person. The most popular engine for the Passat B7 is the 1.8 TSI EA888 family. With a power output of 152-160 horsepower, it provides very good dynamics, especially in combination with the DSJ and high efficiency. The 2.0 TSI 2-liter engine is extremely similar in design to it, except it is equipped with a completely different box and it is more forced in terms of torque but they have the same basic design nuances. The 1.8 engines are mainly the CDAA series, so the two later ones are the CCZB. First of all, you should pay attention to the tendency to all the appetite. The manufacturer struggled with this intensively, but as a result of all the replacements of the piston group, only after 2013 the option can be considered acceptable. It is not top prone to coking at the slightest opportunity and has an acceptable resource. Several different options with different thickness of the piston pin, piston and connecting rod on cars up to 2013 are limitedly compatible with each other, but all have an unpleasant property of starting the war oil at the slice overheating or a rare oil change. This is due to this strange design of the piston rings, insufficient oil drain from the oil scraper ring and its weakness. An additional factor con contributing to losses is contamination of the crankcase ventilation system, leaks of gaskets and oil seals, a tendency to coke inlet valves, increased wear of the intake valve guides, and a lower source of their oil seals. Another nuance is that each owner has to face as the small and unpredictable resource of the timing chains and oil pump. On average, it doesn't exceed 120,000, although there are unique ones with runs over 250 on one chain. Moreover, pump circuit breaks also occur, especially during winter starts. The pump itself rarely fails, but in any case, the result is fatal for the engine. With all this, the motors of this series have a large margin of safety for the piston group, a good crankshaft, a durable block, and a boost margin for one or one and a half to two times without interfering with the piston group, only with the replacement of turbines and the power system. Moreover, moderate forcing doesn't greatly affect the resource during normal operation, at least because timing Tuning firmware primarily reduces the operating temperature, which has a good effect on the condition of the engine. They also require the use of a higher quality and viscous oil and more frequent changes than prescribed by the maintenance schedule. A very significant number of cars in Russia have cheap tuning. Do not be too afraid of this when buying. But in this case, you should take a closer look at the state of the automatic transmission. The other bro brother of the big 1.4 liter engines is noticeably more fragile. Its piston group doesn't tolerate forcing well. The preservation system has a vulnerability in the form of a liquid intercooler, and the timing chain drive has a very small resource and is prone to chain jumps. The family includes four series of motors. The simplest, 1.4, 122 liters. These are uh, CAXA motors. They are also the most common. Less common is the 160 horsepower dual supercharged engine option, PP series, 
CTHD CKMA, compressed gas optimized versions of the 150 horsepower CDGA series are very rare. Oddly enough, the gas engine is the best option. It has a hardened piston group, which is almost not prone to coking, a more durable cylinder head material and a nominal lower operating temperature. Twin supercharged engines have a very complex intake system, with a compressor in a turbine and therefore a high cost of service after the expiration of the warranty. In Europe, they were in demand for their combination of high power and outstanding economy. A large sedan with such an engine on the highway has a consumption of less than 5 liters per 100 and at low speed even less than 4. In the urban cycle, the consumption can be less than 9 liters, which is a serious achievement for a car of such mass with a gas engine. Timing chain problems are typical mainly for cars manufactured before 2012, but surprises are possible after. In any case, the resource will not exceed 120 150,000, and when noise appears, it is recommended to change it immediately without waiting for a jump. If the motor is older, check if the front cover of the engine has been replaced. On the new design, the chain jump projections are of the more aggressive configuration. You also need to monitor the cleanliness of the water oil heat exchanger. It plugs is inserted into the intake manifold and is contaminated with crankcase gases. The serviceability of its cooling pump and the cleanliness of the intercooler radiator section. And even with the complete serviceability of the systems, it is recommended to carefully monitor the operating temperature of the engine and the quality of the gasoline. Annealing after a traffic jam can lead to burnout of the piston as well as summer races on a highway at speeds close to maximum speed. The same consequences are caused by refueling with 90 second gasoline, ignoring as errors in the fuel equipment or failure of the turbine adjustment servo in the closed position. A little more trouble can be caused by the existing tendency for coking on the piston group at standard oil change intervals of 15,000 km. It is less common than on 1.8 2.0 motors, but is not so painless. Motor in the 122 horse version is rather weak for this machine, but with 150 160 horsepower firmware, the turbine is already suffering. It can withstand a maximum of 40 50,000 km. In general, this option is noticeably less reliable than the larger engines, and the reduced fuel consumption and maintenance costs are unlikely to compensate for this disadvantage. The top end 3.6 BWS motor is frankly rare. A very interesting design has a good resource in general, but there are also enough shortcomings, at least a timing chain with insufficient resource, the replacement of which requires the removal of the motor. It is located on the flywheel side, and the replacement of the lower chain is in principle not possible on the machine. Coking of valves, a tendency to coking of the piston group are also noted. A dense layout, a complex intake, an extremely complex design of the cylinder head also do not help to reduce the cost of operation. Despite the lack of supercharging, it is hardly any simpler than the 1.8 TSI. Diesel engines are mainly represented by two types of engines, 2.0 TDI with 140 horsepower. The CFB series with the unit injectors is a relatively old design. The second CBAB engine is already with common rail injection. The version with unit injectors is considered to be unambiguously resourceful and reliable, and the disadvantages associated with the high wear of the camshafts and the drop in oil pressure in the cylinder head are known and can be solved. But the new engines with electronic injection with the same power are much more responsive, have lower consumption and fewer expensive parts. Of course, due to rare complaints, one gets the impression that these are the most reliable engines on the new set. It may well be that it is so, but the operation of a diesel engine in Russia is always a lottery. It depends too much on the quality of the fuel and such units as EGR and particulate filter when operating through traffic jams increase the number of failures and reduce the resource. On this information, all the problems of Passat B7 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.